Hey everybody and welcome to Adventures with Peps today. We are going back into ABC Warriors by Warlord Games in 2000 AD. Look how glorious that cover is. It looks so good. Right, if you've missed the videos, I'll try and drop links or put cards up during this one. I have so far painted the Hammerstein Mark 1s, the Hammerstein Mark 3s, so that is the uh, good guys all done. We're now moving on to the Vulgan forces, starting off with the AK-47. It is a cheap, cheap, cheap model. So the, uh, the Hammersteins are 11 points and have pretty good weapons. You can also upgrade them to have even more expensive weapons. And you get mini unit free. The AK-47s, they have a pretty good gun. The stats are less though. And they only come in at 7 points, so they're definitely cheaper. Hopefully that doesn't mess up the game too much, because the Vulgan forces seem to be a lot more cheaper than the, the Loyalist Hammersteins. But anyway, you're not here for that. You're here to watch the painting video, so let's get it. Right, away we go. So, as you can see, I'm going to be painting all three at once, but you'll probably only see one at a time being painted. I have just given them a quick black prime. Nothing exciting. Just making sure they're all pretty well coated. This one's got some grey around his neck annoyingly, so we'll have to make sure we get into all those corners. We're going to kick things off with the Stormcast Silver. Now, the Hammersteins I started with the lead belt churn and I dry brushed. I'm not going to worry about that dry brushing step this time around, because I have a different effect going on with these models, so I'm just going to absolutely cover them. going to make sure I get in that neck crease first. Give the paint a good watering down so it flows better and then just work your way around the model this is probably going to annoy a few of you because obviously I'm handling the figure a lot I'm not using any paint stands these are big models the ankles are a little bit flimsy I would say as well so I don't want to have pressure on those points so while I'm doing that let's have a quick look at the rules for them the Vulgan AK-47 move 4 inch which I believe is pretty standard, a little bit slower than the Hammersteins. Shoot 2, same as the Hammersteins, fight 2, evade 0, resist 3, and a cool of 2. So their armor is less than the Hammerstein. As I said, they're an auxiliary type model, and they come with a group rule. They come in groups of 3 for your points. And then notoriety of 7. Right, we have the silver down on all 3 models. They look super shiny now. Maybe a little bit too shiny. <laughs> Is that everything? Right, I'm grabbing the camo cloak. This was the closest green I have to what I feel is the green on the models. So we're going to run with that. Make sure you squeeze out a good blob onto your palette. We're going to need a lot of it. And we are going to be spreading this all over the model. Making sure we don't hit the stars, the lenses... And, of course, his gun. The gun is a PPRK Burp gun. That's a great name. You can be used in a one- or hand, two-handed ranged weapon. So, if you go one-handed, you get minus one modifier at short and long range. So, it's eight inch at short, 24 at long. So, it's got pretty good range. If you're at close range, it's plus two to hit. If you're going two-handed, if you're going one-handed, it's plus one. Long range, it's minus one, minus two, and it's a power four with the high power rule. So it's not a terrible gun. I'm confused why you would go one-handed. I don't see... Once again, I don't see the benefit. I don't know if that's for other characters. If they, have, they could use that burp gun and have the ability to use a close combat weapon, or if you had the burp gun built in to an arm on a robot. That's when I can see it being one-handed. But yeah, there's some. I haven't fully read the rules at this point, so I don't know if there's hindrance if you're classified as holding the gun two-handed and you get into close combat. But who knows? I don't know. I'm going to have to read the book, I guess, is the moral of the story. And when I do, we'll expect some videos on that. So I'm taking my time, and I'm going around the entire model with this green. You can already see how it's going to sit. It's taking the shadowy recesses quite nicely. And we can join me in a minute. 
With the green drying, we move on to the Blood Red by Army Painter. Now, obviously, these guys have some heavy roots with communism. Um, I've never read any Pat Mill interviews about the ABC Warriors, but I can only assume <laughs> the Volgans have heavy communist roots based on where they're from. And, of course, hammer and stickle symbols. So we're going for a classic red communist badge. I think it's going to look nice. Looking at the designs on the shoulder, I feel like I could have been braver and not done the shoulders all green. I could have done a different band color on the shoulder. So for my next squad of three, I'm going to do that. It will ultimately mean they're still this green color, but the shoulder pad will point out that they're a different unit to this original squad and will help me identify them on the battlefield a lot easier. You just gotta take your time with this step. These are quite small. As you can see, I'm getting paint all over me. But I'm just taking my time. I'm gonna go around, picking it out. I don't wanna to have to fix the green, so just take your time with it. This is probably a good time to say like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Let me know if you're playing ABC Warrior, how are you finding the figures? Have you read the rules yet? If you have, Make sure you uh, let me know your thoughts on it all. I want to know. I think after this squad is complete, we're going to do Vulcan himself, which is the hammer and stickle robot in the pack. He is quite interesting. He's got a giant green coat, which we're going to have to work out how to do that. Then after that, we're building some terrain. Then hopefully we can start going through the rule book and do the intro games and we'll get some battle reports up. The next step is going to be painting up the guns, and for this stage I'm just using Gravelord Grey. It's a nice dark colour, it's not quite black, which is something I want to try and avoid, but it's going to give this a nice dark metallic -y look to it, which I feel fits the model. you got to remember, these are cannon fodder models, you don't have to go overboard with highlighting and edge lighting and picking out every fine detail. These guys are there to get killed and removed from the game, so you don't have to go crazy. At the same time, if you want to, go as detailed as you want. You paint the way you want to paint. Don't tell me, and I won't tell you. That's how it works around here. I paint for fun, you paint for fun. The whole point is to get models painted and playing games, so hopefully we're doing that all together. Let's not make it harder for ourselves. Now in the photos of these models they have very nice blue eye lenses so I wanted to try and replicate that. I'm using the plasmatic bolt. This will actually make them fit in with the hammer steins on the tabletop because I use that colour on their armour. So it's just something that I guess all robots probably come from a similar resource. <laughs> so having some colours that match each other is pretty good in my mind. It's also something that I can change up with the squads. If I want to try and denote them as different squads, maybe I can change up the eye lenses. But this is a nice easy step, you just splosh it on. And just like that, we're nearing the end of this painting. we just got to get some yellow on the models. Which I'm just using the Zealot Yellow from Army Painter. Just splodging it on. Luckily, anywhere that there's yellow, there seems to be red behind it. So if it spills over, it's really not the end of the world. Like, very simple, very straightforward. These are very easy models to paint. This isn't taking me long at all. Probably half an hour for the entire unit start to finish. Yeah, I'm not going to win prizes, but they look great from three foot away. And that is all I want and need from them. And with that stage done, we are on to just some final details. So I'm grabbing the Grim Black for the very final touches. And I'm going to use them on the tubing on the back. As you can now see, they have a lot of tubing on the backs. So got to make sure I capture all of that. Just take your time. There's no need to rush this step. If you rush it, you might make an error and mess up the green. And then there's no way you're going back to fix that at this stage now. So just take your time. Get it right the first time. And you don't have to come back to it. The nice thing is, 
the green shininess of the suit is going to show through a little bit on these. And it's going to make it look like the armor is reflecting off the piping. And then the only other area I want to hit with the black is the stock of the gun. I just felt it needed to break up a little bit. The body of the gun should be a slightly different color. I don't think the Volgans would spend much time or energy on the weapons of their basic troopers. So keeping it simple like that is really, really speaks to me and it also helps with the painting time. So I'm going to finish up these models. I'm going to slap a dry brush of grey on the base and we will take some photos. I hope you've enjoyed. Drop me a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out the links below. I've uh, added a few things of late. There's some affiliate codes down there. There's some uh, energy drink codes. There's the patron, which isn't a paywall patron in any way at all. It's also just these YouTube videos. I just wanted to post them somewhere else so I'm easily found everywhere. And that's it. That's all i got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers for watching.